very good morning to one and all. Uh, probably a lot of people are still to come out of the yesterday's brainstorming marathon, which uh, they have uh, come to as a uh, witness for the first time. Anyway, we'll start. At the outset, I'd like to thank Dr. Rohit and Dr. Naren for giving me this opportunity to share my views on a lens X flare. A lot of people here would be wondering, I am talking about a machine named LensX and then the capability to make a flap of, out of it. A bit of antithesis, but uh, let us see how do we go about it. The two big questions, how and why. And when you have multiple options of a flap maker available, why are we talking about a LensX flap? Well, we are all clinicians, but we are all a bit of scientists, so let us understand how does the machine work to create a flap. Uh, the machine was designed to be a combined platform. So we need to understand that the two processes are different when you are doing a cataract procedure and a, a flap procedure. While you are doing a cataract procedure, the PI has to snuggly fit the eye and make sure that it doesn't move. But at the same time, the laser has to fire deep inside the lens substance to do the lensectomy on the lens capsule as well as on the cornea. So the fit should not be that tight enough to create corneal folds, otherwise the laser won't be firing the way we want. This is slightly in contrast to what we are doing when we are creating a flap, because there the applanation has to be 100% on the cornea so that the laser is able to fire with a, with a precision of about four microns. So this is absolutely opposite way of doing a procedure, but still it is achieved. And how is it achieved? First thing first comes the uh, patient interface. The two interfaces are different, and this is the key probably to achieving what we are uh, trying to do with a, a lens X flap. The skirt is shorter with a lens X fl uh, flap. The, uh, the diameter is smaller. Even the flank is slightly slot shorter. The curved interface is slightly steeper. Now what this does is it allows the PI to dive deep inside the eye and make sure that it is tightly fit when the flap is being made as compared to a soft fit patient interface where you need the soft contact lens to go in. So actually this is the key to make sure that the machine is working in both the cases. Obviously the proprietary variable numerical aperture because when you are doing a cataract procedure, the laser beam is used in a different way as a wide beam, a narrow beam, and a mid beam to uh, create different steps of the cataract surgery. While in case of a cat, uh, flap procedure, it is only the wide beam which is used. Now, the machine also has been tweaked to make sure that it works as a cataract procedure and a flap procedure. So right from the laser spot to the frequency of the machine to the energy delivered and the IOP rise is different. Though certain parameters still remain the same because we are working on the same hardware. And the most important part, we all like to customize our surgery. So the machine allows us to customize the flap, the thickness of the flap, the size of the flap, the position of the hinge, the hinge angle, as well as the side cut angle can be customized depending upon the ease of doing the surgery from the patient side and required from the patient side. Each and every step of the procedure is a real-time uh, video image guided one. And you have an OC2 to, to help to make sure that you are at the perfect level while doing the surgery. So right from docking, to applying suction and laser application. Everything is image guided and under your control, under your observation, which is probably the key when you are taking a potentially 6.6 or 6.5i. We all understand that the primary procedure of docking is where the surgery is driven by and the centration while doing the docking is of primary importance. Uh, while we are doing a LASIK procedure, the limbus acts as a guide and the non-dilated pupil. This is in stark contrast to the cataract procedure where a dilated pupil comes into picture. A small recommendation for the people from the company, if they are listening, try to introduce the same auto-centration, well, what we have in a cataract procedure for a Lexis procedure. And if you can integrate Varion, which is probably now possible because uh, Wavelight and Alcon are working together to make sure that when you are treating higher astigmatism, the marking is much more easier and the over and above the pupil imprint, the scleral vessel also can act as a guide. So you need to understand the graphics on the screen 
there are about seven circles. The outer four circles are in the limbal area, and the inner three circles are in the pupillary area. They are marked with a different color scheme. So the outer one is the white one, which is for your surgical view. The inner circle to the white one is an orange one, which is the indicator circle for, to identify approximately the limbal area. Uh, the circle inner to it is a, in a purple or a magenta color, which is for the horizontal overlap for the laser application. And the innermost circle is the yellow one, which is probably the circle where you have the diameter of the flap mark or the flap edges mark. So this is while you are docking. The inner three circles, which come in the size of two and four millimeter, help you to center your docking at the pupil. And the innermost circle, the 0.5 millimeter one, is probably what I like the most, because this works once you apply the suction. Once you have applied the suction, if you feel that the patient is slightly decentered, you have a scope to offset that decentration by about 0.5 millimeter in all directions. So this makes sure that whenever you are creating a flap, you are dead sure right in the center before you apply your lasers. This is something which is a small thing, but really important right on the right side of the screen. This is the applanation force indicator. So it gives you an idea that the applanation is perfect. You are, now you can apply the suction when it is in the yellow zone. And when it is in the green zone is the time when you apply your laser. So again, you are seeing what you are doing, and you are sure that the applanation force is good enough for the most important uh, procedures while you are doing the flap. This is something slightly different from an FS200, but for me, this is a unique thing. The laser starts from the periphery, spirals down to the center. What this does is it allows the opaque bubble layer to disperse through the uh, loser tissue from the limbus to the subconjunctival tissue, thereby making sure that the OBL doesn't interfere during the whole process of laser application. Well. When I understood this, I was still apprehensive whether it will work or not. And this is my experience of about 30 months and four, uh, more than 500 plus eyes. Uh, I prefer the 80 and 90 degree side cut. I started with a 130 microns flap and have now shifted to 110 microns because my confidence over the machine has grew. So today, whether it's a steep cornea or flat cornea, I go ahead and do a 110 micron flap and it is working absolutely well. We try to grade ourselves two important things, the ease of lifting the flap and the stromal bed quality of our procedure. And on both counts, more than 90% of the cases, the patients have worked really well. Lot of us are worried about the accuracy of the flap. The analysis of the initial 200 cases showed us that the standard deviation of the flap thickness was about 6.9 microns. We didn't have a case of aborted flap. Or a, and all the flap quality was really excellent. The visual rec uh, recovery is really rapid as compared to a microkeratoma assisted surgery because we understand that the flap fits nuggily well and hits, heals faster. No cases of diffuse lamellar keratitis or any other kind of uh, infection still reported. So for me, the why has now become why not because you get an excellent accuracy and quality of flap with the convenience of using a smaller space and the same machine. You save on your hardware, software upgrades, as well as the maintenance contract. And a lot of people like me who are into making a cataract surgery out of a femtosecond laser flap, now uh, uh, flex, you have a platform which allows you to do even a LASIK surgery. So, and to an added advantage, the newer software has allowed us to create tunnels for the index as well as you have pockets for the press biopia correcting uh, segments. So this makes sure that this is now more than a one machine ta taking care of different needs. So you have a machine which is giving best of all the worlds and I feel this is one which I have made uh, patients happy out of it and my apprehension has now come to become an applause for the machine. So thank you, and I'm leaving behind you with a small video of my surgery. I hope you can like it and you can comment upon it. It is more than welcome. Hold up,
Yeah.